Hi, I'm Ryan Speakman, and this is These Final Days Ministries, and welcome to episode number four of a series that I'm calling The Truth About the Rapture. So we've been uh, discussing this um, idea that in the last of the last days, which I believe that uh, most of us would agree that uh, we're living in, in those times now that we're getting very, very close to, uh, to uh, what we call the seven-year Great Tribulation, the end of uh, human history as we, uh, as we currently know it. Uh, most of us probably agree that we're in those times. And so we're talking about this idea that uh, during this time, that the Bible tells us that there will be some kind of a great deception that will cause uh, many in the body of Christ to, to fall away. I think it means actually uh, lose um, our salvations during uh, the times that are coming. And it's kind of unimaginable. I mean, I know that there's a, a lot of debate even about that point. Is it possible for a believer, you, believer to uh, lose their you know, salvation at all? Well, um, the Bible does make it clear that um, during the Great Tribulation, there actually is a, you know, certainly a way to lose, you know, one salvation. He, even Jesus himself, we, we know, said that, uh, that, that there is an unforgivable sin, and that's blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which, uh, which kind of relates to what happens during the, uh, the, the, the Great Tribulation. So, so uh, we want to be on guard against this, of course. Um, I doubt that anyone watching this, I doubt that any Christian anywhere, uh, for that matter, any any person anywhere, you know, Christian or or otherwise, uh, if I were to ask, "Are you in deception?" Um, probably nobody would would say, "Oh, sure, yeah, I'm in deception," because that that's the nature of deception, right? If we're in deception, we don't know that we're in deception. But if the Bible clearly tells us that there that there are going to be a lot of believers in de- in deception in the times that we're living in now, the times uh, leading up to and including uh, the Great Tribulation then what's the disconnect there? Uh, you know, we, we need to at least be open to the possibility that, that we've been misinformed about some things, about the times that are coming, uh, particularly whether we're going to experience the, these times or not. Because Satan, uh, as I've said before, he has an end game. He, he isn't just trying to stir up trouble. He, he wants to commandeer this earth. He wants to take over this whole universe. And what's the biggest threat to that? Who's the biggest threat? It's us. It, it's the body of Christ, and uh, and also God's uh, old covenant people, the the Jews. So old covenant and new covenant alike, we pose a, a, a serious threat to uh, to what Satan is planning to do through uh, the Antichrist uh, during the seven year Great Tribulation. So he's not just waiting for that time to start and then he'll start, you know, trying to throw us off our game. He's uh, very very smart. He's been working for millennia to uh, to prepare for this time, and uh, and he wants. The body of Christ to not be prepared. He wants us to be in darkness and deception about the times that are coming. So uh, we need to be on guard against that again. You know, at least let, let's be open to the possibility that we've been taught some wrong doctrine. Um, I, I, I'm assuming that everybody watching this video is is uh, is willing. You're willing to change your mind if I can show you in the Word where, where it, you know, clearly says something different than what uh, so many of us are are believing, which is. Uh, all these doctrines that either tell us that uh, we're not going to be here for the time of the Antichrist, that would include the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine, the mid-tribulation rapture doctrine, uh, or that there is no end times at all. That's uh, preterism, amillennialism, uh, post-millennialism. So many doctrines out there about the uh, the end times. How do we know which one is right? Um, I, I don't want you to get the impression that I'm giving you the Ryan Speakman model of the end times. That's not what I'm trying to do at all. This is not my theory, not my model. I'm just trying to get into the Word of God to see what the Bible actually says. And then uh, with the help of, the, of, of revelation from the Holy Spirit, uh, hopefully we can understand what the Bible really tells us. So it's not my model, it's the Bible's model. And really what I'm teaching, um, and this might be a surprise to some of you or a lot of you, uh, is what the, the entire body of Christ believed for uh, almost the first 2,000 years of our history. So it wasn't until 1827 that a uh, young Irish clergyman in London named John Nelson Darby uh, really invented out of thin air this uh, doctrine that we call the pre-tribulation rapture uh, doctrine. And, uh, and, you know, again, today we have, you know, literally dozens of, of models uh, that, that, have, that have kind of sprung out of that. I mean, um, you know, they, they, they don't seem to be related on the surface, but again, they have this one thing in common, make sure the body of Christ isn't ready. Let's get back into uh, where we left off last week. And we're going to spend a few episodes here. This is such a rich uh, passage uh, from the Apostle Paul. He's speaking to the, uh, the church at Thessalonica. This is his uh, second letter to that church. And uh, the Apostle Paul begins, and this is so great because not only are we going to 
uh, see evidence of what I've, I've been saying, that there is going to be deception, widespread deception in the body of Christ, something for us to really take seriously and be on guard against. But, you know, as an added bonus, we're going to see, you know, the second coming here. We're going to see a hint about the timing of the rapture, uh, all sorts of, you know, things about the end times. So this is a very, very rich passage, uh, by no means the only one that we're going to, going to be using to, you know, build our case and uh, get our, our, you know, proper understanding. But, uh, but, but let's take a look. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you... So I want to uh, pause there for a second and break this down a little bit and look at the, the, the components here. So uh, Paul is talking to this church, and he's saying um, he wants to talk to them about uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what do you think that he's referring to there? The, he wrote this letter uh, years after Jesus had already gone to the cross, was resurrected fr from the dead, and then ascended to the Father. So, so uh, now he's saying the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What can he possibly mean? Well, this is the event that we call the second coming, right? So this is a very real event. Um, it's something that, that has not happened yet. So this is a challenge that, I, that I've already had the opportunity to put out to uh, some of those who are believing that there, that there is no end times at all, that all this was fulfilled uh, back shortly after the time of Christ, uh, maybe around the time of the destruction of the second temple by the Romans in uh, AD 70. But I've actually posed this question to them because, you know, the, you know very intelligent guys, so I, I respect all of you very, very highly. Uh, I love you guys. You're my brothers in Christ and sisters. Uh, but, but what I've noticed is that in the discussions I've gotten with, um, with, a, with a preterist, a millennialist, post-millennialist, uh, they throw a lot of scripture at me, very intelligent, very, very, you know, detailed arguments. But invariably, it seems like whenever I ask, well, what about the second coming of Jesus? Has that happened yet? Uh, I haven't gotten an answer back yet. Maybe there is one. I just haven't gotten it yet. But uh, but but my question is: Do you believe in the in the physical return of Jesus to to this earth? And uh, if so, can any of us really make a reasonable argument that that's happened yet? I don't think that we can. Jesus has simply not come back yet. So th that one point poses a huge challenge to the to this group who don't believe in an end times. Uh, if, if you do believe that, that, that Jesus is coming back again and that this is a future event, then that really kind of ruins the whole model that there is no end times because the Bible just places all these other events, you know, in conjunction with the second coming, the rapture, the resurrection, the time of the Antichrist, the seven year great tribulation, the beginning of the millennial reign, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so already we're, we're, we're kind of, you know, challenging at least that view. Uh, and, and I want to look at uh, Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, because I want to really uh, emphasize this point that no, this event, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, it had not happened at the time that Paul wrote this letter to, to the church at Thessalonica, and to this date, it has not happened. So, so where, where, do we, uh, where do we get you know, um, some detailed information about the, uh, the, the, that event, the second coming, what it actually means? Uh, in Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. So this is uh, after um, Jesus had been resurrected from the dead. This is actually exactly 40 days later. Jesus, we know that when he was resurrected, the whole point of the resurrection is that he rose bodily from the dead, that he rose from the grave in his uh, physical body. It was a physical resurrection. And, uh, and then Jesus spent the next 40 days on the earth in his physical body. We don't have a lot of uh, information about that. He kind of you know disappeared from the scene you know, off and on, and, and uh, we, we just don't have a lot of information about what happened during that time. But, uh, but in, in this passage, he's standing on top of the Mount of Olives. I've actually been to that spot. There, there's a little crusader structure there now surrounded by a, a mosque. The, the history is very, very complex, and it's called the, uh, the Chapel of the Ascension. The apostles are up there uh, with him, the disciples, and they're standing with Jesus, and he's getting ready to leave, and he said some things to them and, uh, and given them some instruction, and then we read this. Uh, again, Acts chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. Now when he, Jesus, had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So his physical body raises up from the earth and goes up into the sky and disappears in, in, in a cloud, in an actual cloud. Uh, verse 10, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. So I'm going to just take a stab in the dark here and say that those are angels. 
Verse 11, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? So they're kind of standing there like, you know, turkeys in a rainstorm. I, that's an old term, but anyways, yeah, that's what I think of, you know, staring up in the sky, kind of, kind of awestruck. The angels say, this same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And then there's other scripture that tells us that when Jesus comes back, sure enough, he's going to uh, come down and, and land. He's going to alight on that exact spot on the Mount of Olives that he ascended from. And the angels here plainly say that he'll do so in like manner. So he went up to heaven in his physical body. He's coming back from heaven in, in his physical body. And, uh, and then he'll land on the Mount of Olives, and then uh, the millennial reign will begin. So, uh, you know, again, clearly this has not happened yet. Can anyone make that argument? Has Jesus actually returned to the earth? So, so uh, uh, we're going to stop there. The, you know, again, time really flies, you know, when I'm doing these. So time flies when you're having fun, right? And I'm having fun. Hope you are too. Uh, but next week we're going to pick up again and, and uh, look at this event that Paul relates to the second coming which uh, in verse 1 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, again, it says, and our gathering together to him. So I want you to ponder that. What can that mean? This is an event that Paul says happens at the moment that Jesus comes back, our gathering together to him. Think about what that might mean. And uh, again, we'll pick it up again next week and and dig into that point uh, thoroughly before we move on. So uh, God bless you. And remember to stay rooted and grounded in scripture and your faith. Stay filled with the Holy Spirit in these final days, and I will see you next week. Ryan's new book, These Final Days, Part 1, The Truth About the Rapture, the Four Horsemen, and the Prelude to the Great Tribulation, is the first in a series that will revolutionize your understanding of what the Bible really says about these final days. Don't miss this groundbreaking book. Get it now at Amazon or at thesefinaldays.org. Also available on Kindle and iBooks.